Today we're going to look at the metric system. The metric system is a unit or method of measurement in which we have three different units based on what we want to measure. So we use what's called meters as our base if we want to measure length. We use what are called grams as our base in measuring mass or weight. And we use what are called liters as our base for measuring capacity. Now if we look at this chart, when I go to the right of my base here, I have what's called DECA, which stands for 10 of our base measures of units. So I could have a DECA meter would be 10 meters. A hecto stands for 100 of our base. So a hectometer is 100 meters. And then kilo standing for 1,000 of our base. So a kilometer or a kilometer would be 1,000 meters. Now when we go to the right, the numbers or values get smaller. If I have a decimeter, I have one tenth of a meter. A centi millimeter, excuse me, centimeter would be one one hundredth of a meter. And then our millimeter would be one one thousandth of a meter. Now if I'm converting back and forth between these numbers, if I'm going from a larger unit of measurement to a smaller one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by a base of 10, and we'll find out what that means in a moment. But if I'm going from a smaller unit down to a larger, I'm going to divide. And if we think about it, it does make sense because if we're taking a number that's smaller, going to larger, we divide. So let's go for example, let's take something along the lines of 2.5 kilometers. What I want to do is figure out 2.5 kilometers is how many meters? Well, the first thing to check is, am I going from a larger unit to a smaller unit or a smaller to larger? Well, I know kilometers over here on the far left. It's definitely the largest. So I'm going from larger to smaller. I'm going to find my arrow from larger to smaller. This tells me that this is going to be a multiplication problem. So what I need to do is count the number of steps I'm moving over from kilometer to meter. So I'm starting at kilometer. Let's count them out. One, two, three. And now if you think back before, I said that this was on a base 10 number system. So 10 to the third power, we know is equal to 1,000. So what I'm going to do now, since I'm moving from larger to smaller, and I'm multiplying, I'm going to multiply my number by 1,000. Now I can work that out, or I can use a calculator. But an even easier way of doing this is by taking this decimal and moving it to the right, because we move from the right here, the same number of places it took me to get from kilometer to just a regular old meter. Now we counted them out before. It was one, two, three places. So I can take this decimal in the 2.5, move it three places to the right, and that will also give me my answer. So I'm going to do that below. So remember, we have started with 2.5, and it needs to move three places to the right. So I'm going to move it three places and use zeros as my placeholder. So here goes our first jump, one, two, and three. So I'll put my decimal in there, bring in my zeros, and if I kind of just either erase or ignore the lines that show the movement of my decimal, I can see now that I have a number of 2,500. So now I found an answer for this without even really having to do any multiplication. We well, didn't have to do any type of math. 2.5 kilometers? Well, yeah, it is. It's equal to 2,500 meters. So well, now let's look at another example of going in the opposite way. Because remember, we just took kilometers, which are larger than meters. We went from larger to smaller. Let's look at another example. We're going to go from a smaller unit to a larger unit. So in the previous example, we went from larger units to smaller units. This time around, we're going to go from smaller to larger units. Now, let's take a look at our example problem. Let's say we have 3.2 millimeters, which we know is all the way to the right. We want to find out 3.2 millimeters equals how many decimeters? Well, remember, this is on a base 10 system, so we're going to use what we know about base 10 numbers, and we're going to count the number of spaces that we have to move to the left this time because we'll end up doing a division problem. So remember, we're going from millimeters, which is here, to decimeters, which is here. So let's count the number of spaces first. We're moving one, 
two places. So now what I have is 10 to the power of 2, or 10 squared, which you know, equals 100. And since I'm going from smaller to larger, it's going to be a division problem. So what I'm actually going to do is take 3.2, and then I want to divide that by 100. Why 100? Because I had to move two places, and 2 to the power of 10 equals 100. Now there's also another easier way of doing this, and it's by moving the decimal over. We knew in our last case, when we were going from larger to smaller, we move the decimal to the right. Well, this time, when we're going from smaller to larger, moving to the left, we're going to move our decimal to the left as well. So I'm going to rewrite my 3.2 here at the bottom. 3.2. Two spaces to the left on our chart means that I take my decimal two places to the left as well. So there's one, there's two. And if I put a zero in front of that, ignore my old decimal and my lines, I now have a new answer. Moved over to what? The tenths, hundredths, thousandths place? Thirty-two thousandths? Now I have a new answer to put in here. Zero point three two decimeters. And if I really think about that, yeah, it does make sense because I went from a smaller number to, or excuse me, a smaller unit of measurement to a larger one. So that means the number that's attached with it is going to get smaller. Now, in the two examples that we used, our numbers already had decimals in them. But you can make your other numbers have decimals in them simply by putting it in the right place. So let's say we have, for example, a number that was like 32. Let's say we wanted to find out 32 millimeters. Well, we know we can add a decimal to that by putting it in the right place. And in this case, I don't want to change the number 32, so I need to make sure that it goes at the end of the number. If I were to put it in the front, that would give me a different value. So whenever you're just given a whole number, in this case 32, let's take another one, 23. Whenever you're given a whole number, you can put a decimal behind the last digit, and then you can use the method that we talked about. If we're going from smaller to larger, we can move it to the left. If we're going from larger to smaller, we just move that decimal to the right. So remember, whenever you can put a decimal into the number, it's always going to make it easier on you because you won't have to do any math. If you get in a pinch and you feel like you can only solve it using math, main thing to remember is if I'm going from a smaller unit to a larger unit, I have to divide. If I'm going from a larger unit to a smaller unit, we multiply.